This is a Zenith Chairside uh, radio chassis of a set I have decided to try and restore for a co-worker. Uh, he initially got it from his mother's home before she passed away. The intentions of gutting the cabinet and putting a computer in it. <laughs> I convinced him to let me see if I could do something with the radio first. And this is going to be an experience with, for me. Uh, I have done some minor restorations in the past, but never anything quite this extensive. And I intend on trying to do my best job possible for him. This is a three band receiver. The dial is used, uh, and the chassis is used in several different models. I'll get the cabinet the chair side uh, a little later. But uh, as you can see from the front panel, where the controls are, I've done some minor cleaning, doing some exploration. Found out that the tone control pot from that hole, uh, it was frozen. I managed to finally get it loosened up and rotated freely. Should have checked it with no meter before I did that, but I found out the carbon on the wiper was completely gone after I took the pot apart and looked at it. So I've got a replacement pot I'll be putting in there. I wished I had the original because I liked the way it was made. They actually are made very more robustly in the uh, uh, wiper mechanism than today's pots. Let me reach up here and get it and see if I can get it in the frame. The carbon strip is on the wafer. Hard for me to see what I'm doing here. The brown wafer. But there's actually a spring metal strip over top of the, the carbon that the wiper pushes down as it rotates. Thus the wiper never comes in contact with the carbon. To me that's actually would uh, th seemingly be more robust than uh, later versions where the wiper made direct contact. Uh, less noise in the sur uh, system and probably less wear and tear on the carbon strip. Okay, anyway, the underside of the chassis, this chassis has been worked on in the past so this is going to be another experience. As you can see, if I get closer here, the capacitor has been replaced with these capacitors which are just left floating. I don't like that idea. I'll be putting terminal strips in a newer electrolytics. Uh, this wire which was uh, supposed to go over to uh, the tone pot is actually to be plus. There's another wire right here which should have gone to the uh, tone pot as well get a little better focused in there. It actually comes off the 5Y3 rectifier, so it was hanging loose when I first got this, so this thing hadn't had me plus on it in a while, fortunately. The rest of the controls appear to be fairly good, but, as I'll show you here in a second, turn it up. Like I said, it had been worked on in the past. This coil is the first IF. It's not original as you can see I think you can see uh, it's just floating there it did not fit the mounting holes so whoever replaced it actually just went in and put a some sort of a disc on one leg uh, mounting leg and clamped it inside the hole so it's kind of floating free I've located uh, an internet source that claims to have the original IF can to me fairly reasonable price and so I'm going to uh, once I get into it go ahead and get that can ordered and replace that can. The thing that has me most concerned is let's see if I can zoom in the variable capacitor the tuning cap has quite a bit of corrosion on the cap its uh, framework now the, the veins the stator and rotors appear fairly shiny so, if, barring any other problems that I haven't really checked on yet, hopefully I can clean that framework up and uh, get most of the rest of the corrosion off of this chassis. It's not as heavy as I found out as I originally thought. There's quite a bit on this corner and on the front. A lot of uh, 
surface corrosion on the cans that look like it's going to polish off okay and I all this you can see how darkly rusted looking appears there uh, all of this over in here looked the same way and uh, one application of some navel jelly on it and cleaning it off and a little brasso revealed it's really not that bad it's got some spot rusting so I'm deciding how to address it I don't want to uh, sorry John don't want to cover it up with paint if at all possible because uh, this original unless I have to let's put it that way this original pleating if I get the sur surface rust off and get it cleaned up looks pretty good so I'm hoping to maybe match the plating with a color and spot paint it since this will probably never be seen it's buried deep inside a cabinet uh, that no one can even look at the back side of the chassis from because it is a chair side like I say uh, on the back of the chassis looks pretty good There's been worked on in the past too. It's got a matching transformer that's been replaced. The matching transformer and the field coil have continuity. If you ever replace the matching transformer, as you can see here, just twisted the wires together and soldered them and they were hanging free. No insulation, no tape, nothing. That'll be cleaned up too. I have applied audio to the matching transformer out of the headphone jack of uh, an S38 I have here. Put some voltage on the field coil uh, courtesy of a 9 volt battery and it does make audio. It does make it without the field coil uh, and then when I energize the field coil it gets a little louder. So I would say it's probably, even though it's grungy looking and needing some repair work, probably going to be okay I'm going to do a little more checking on it and if I determine it is all right essentially I have already communicated with another individual speaker freak 95 on YouTube and he uh, is going to take on doing the reconing and uh, getting the uh, speaker back to its uh, good glory I guess I should say I would rather put the original speaker in there if at all possible then to hack in a permanent magnet replacement but if I have to I will do that this speaker was manufactured October 26 1936 which kind of goes along with the dates of the chassis but the radio itself was supposed to be about a 37 model so uh, I have a feeling that this particular set was manufactured early 37 and they were using up stock left over from uh, a run of 36 that was compatible uh, I'm gonna move out to the cabinet because that's gonna be another sort of challenge for me I've done a little woodworking but uh, I've never tried to match old uh, with some new stock uh, so I'm gonna have to play around my router table and a few other odds, odds and ends and try to match it and I'll show you that in a moment Here's the scene of the chair side cabinet sitting on the, on the ground out here in the garage. Along with the chassis, it's not sitting on the ground. It's on a, a, a toolbox, plastic toolbox, of another project which is going to be a real challenge for me. I'm uh, still doing some research. I'm going to make some requests for some more information on this particular chassis, which so far has really evaded a good identification. The label just states the manufacturer, which is E.H. Scott, and a serial number, no model number. <laughs> Talk about a challenge. There's the cabinet from it, and it's got some severe veneer damage as well as some possible sub-veneer structure damage. Let me get this uh, cabinet up a little higher here. Let me set the camera back down. I'll show you more about it. I'm going to have to do this two-handed. Okay, let me try to get to maximum depth on this I can. This is that Zenith chair side cabinet. And the challenge for me is going to be this area right here. 
on both corners it looks like uh, it suffered the wrath of vacuum cleaners over the years so my challenge is going to be to try and remove the damaged wood let's see i lost my here we go remove the damaged wood manufacture some pieces that'll match it and hopefully be able to integrate the new with the old and with some filling and refinishing and so forth have it be as unnoticeable as possible otherwise this cabinet's actually in pretty good shape uh, and if you recognize this from other internet uh, browsing you know what I'm talking about on the cabinet style I'm gonna I ought to put this I guess on uh, <laughs> on the tripod anyway it's open underneath uh, let's see and up underneath this first section here it's where the radio mounted the speaker mounted up under this one radio chassis mounted vertically with controls protruding through the top and the dial protruding through the top the speaker was covered with a nice dust cover however it with the exception of the grill cloth is wide open anything spilled and it looks like it has had numerous spills since it was in a house with children early on could easily run behind the trim basil inside underneath the knobs and in the speaker consequently uh, just wiping the surface up did not get rid of the spill and that's what it looks like uh, liquid spilled on it over the years and set on that chassis and corroded it in areas and that's it looked to tell you the truth looked like dried milk on that pot and uh, it no doubt did in matter of fact inside on what's left of the carbon strip has a rim of that same white substance that looked like dried milk so it probably deteriorated the carbon i'm hoping the volume control is okay if not i'll have to get a replacement with an all switch for it it appears to be at first glance but until i put it in use i won't know so anyway this is as you can tell, I've already gotten into this project, but I had started a uh, email communications with John, uh, which I'll uh, put a link on here for him about this, and he asked me to uh, do a pre, at least a pre-restoration series or a sh uh, video on this. So I uh, never done a, a YouTube video. Borrowed my wife's handy cam. <laughs> Try to get it dumped off, edited, and cleaned up a little bit. 